Guys, I love Eldrazi, all right? It's been one of my favorite archetypes of all time, and Modern Horizon 3 stuff that came out, we get a new Eldrazi commander that is probably, I would argue, my favorite and the best Eldrazi commander there. It genuinely puts out the idea of what Eldrazi are supposed to do. Create a bunch of spawns and scions that just show the inevitability and then eventually prove that they're inevitable thing. And that's kind of the point of this, vi of this video and this deck. So if you guys like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what your favorite commander is. We'll get to it with Aslask, the Swelling Scourge. Three mana, two, two. Whenever this or another cre uh, colorless creature you control dies, you get an ex counter. Experience counters, you know, basically can't be removed. They can't normally be dealt with, uh, except for some niche cards. And you can play whatever uh, experience counter commanders or whatever you want because you're all five colors. Because you can pay Wooberg and creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of experience counters you have. Scions and spawns you control getting indestructible and annihilator one until end of turn. That is really, really good, all right? Especially the Annihilator 1. Getting Indestructible is fine, but getting an Annihilator 1, what are we gonna be doing this whole deck? I don't know, make a whole bunch of Scions and Spawns, because why wouldn't you? Like, Malevolent Rebirth gives you a Spawn, and reveal the top four cards of your library, put a permanent from among them into your hand, the rest in your graveyard, because card draw. But it gives you, it gives you Spawns, Kindred Dominance, just choose Eldrazi, and everything that's not in Eldrazi dies, which you won't really care because there's very few things in the deck that aren't spawns, or, well, I mean, aren't Eldrazi. Glimpse the Impossible, you could just either make, it's a new card from Modern Horizon, but you can either exile top three cards, play them this turn, or spawns for each one that you didn't cast, which turn three, being able to just get three spawns can be really good, and is honestly really good to play on curve. Brood Birthing, you can either, if you own a spawn, you create three spawns, or you're probably going to have anyway, because that's the whole point of the deck. You're just creating a whole lot of them. It's kind of the point. Urza Zinki makes your Eldrazi's cost less. Sol Ring, because obviously, Panharmonica, you know, doubles your ETB triggers with a plethora of them. That's why we're playing stuff like Teleportation Circle and Conjurer's Closet, because they're going to be entering a whole lot, so why not double up on them? Scions. Maskwood Nexus turns all of your Eldra- you, you guessed it, Scions and Spawns. So now, Destructible and Annihilator, one. Yeah. Mana Crypt, just because this deck has a high mana cost, so you might as well just need a little bit of push. Idol of False God is a new card from Modern Horizon 3. Allows you to create even more Spawns, control dies, put 1-1 one -one counters on this. As long as it has 8 or more 1-1 one -one counters on it, it's a 0-0 zero -zero in addition to its other types, and it has Annihilator 2 which is just really good. I mean, hey, all your stuff is done. Annihilator 2. Forsaken Monument makes all your spawn scions and whatever. Plus two, tap permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless, two of the lands in your deck. Do tap spell, you gain two life, which is just inevitability. You could just stay stay around. Conjurer's Closet, blink creatures, arcane segment, because why not? Let's though, so, for now, because I like to do creatures last and no so, Whatever, except for the fact that we're running every single Urza's land possible, because Urza's lands are just really good for some reason. Ugin the Ineffable... Ineffable? Ineffable? Six mana, colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast, and the rest of the stuff you don't really... It's six mana, make all your stuff cost two less, basically. Really good. Uh, it's basically Urza's Incubator, but slightly different. The removal spell. You have literally anything, like... I don't know. It's just a three mana exile target creature. Cosmic's Command, you can either create a bunch of spawns. You can scry X, then draw a card, exile creature, X or less, or up to X, exile up to X target cards from a graveyard, which all those are just good. Also, they get discounted from Urza's Incubator. Oh, it's creature spells. Uh, the ineffable and there's another card another card that discounts just i'll draw spell heralds the end colorless spells you cast with mana uh greater cost one less to cast so if you just if you say hey i'm gonna do x is seven well, x is five then it cast so you know neat i'll confluence is just target 
until end of turn, or blink something, or create a scion, or any of those, and they will all be good at the end of the day. But enchantments, because enchantments are where things get spicy. Obviously, teleportations, spreading play. Whenever a creature comes into play, destroy all of color with it. They can't be regenerated. <laughs> I'm playing a colorless deck. Creatures that, but none of my creatures have colors. Therefore, wait a minute, it's just a, whenever an opponent plays a creature, exile all of their creatures. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Spreading Plague is nuts in this deck, all right? Path of Annihilation, create a little bit of spawns. Uh, Eldrazi, you can drop for mana. Cast a creature spell with mana value seven or greater. You gain four life, that doesn't really matter. Allow your spawns and your scions and stuff to tap for mana instead of sacrificing them for mana is always just good. You can also tap it mana, then sacrifice it for another, meaning your spawns and tap for two. Tap and Sacrifice for two is really good. Parallel Liable, every single token you ever create. Cosmic Sun Sealing is just, oh. Cast a, a creature spell, mana value four, five, or spawns, which is actually quite a bit, quite a number. But cast a creature spell, mana value, draw three cards, like Kozilek. Kozilek single-handedly draws you six cards. The old Kozilek, not the newer one, because the newer one, do I have it in the, I do have the newer one, because the newer one is also neat. Impact Tremors, just every time Scion a Spawn enters, you deal damage. I mean, yeah, they're up creatures, but like, you're really caring about Scions and Spawns. Garrick's up Trample because Aslask does not give things Trample. You may know, just having stuff gain Trample is always just good. Also, a little bit of card in and out. From Beyond, just put a bunch of sketch search for an Eldrazi card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Echoes of Eternity. Which is a new card from Modern Horizons 3 as well. Is just nuts. I mean, triggered ability of a colorless spell you control or another colorless permanent you control triggers. That ability triggers an additional time, which is basically all of them. Cast a colorless spell, copy it, may choose new targets for the copy. Excuse me? You get double on double everything and double triggers on your doubles? This card is nuts. It is insane. One of the best cards to be ever printed. Totally was a mistake. 100%. Has to be. You just tap for mana instead of just, you know, having to sacrifice them. Black Market Connection. Create you 3-2 Scion spawns. Can create you treasures. Draw you cards. Good. Awakening Zone. Creates spawns. Arcane Adaptation. Makes everything you have Scion spawns. Uh, Anointed Procession. Doubles your Scion spawn creation. Though... Yeah, as you can tell, we're making a whole lot of them. Like a whole buttload lot of them. But now we're on the creatures, the cream of the cream. What are we going to be using the mana for? What are we going to be blinking? What are we going to be cheating out for utter bullshit? What are we going to be... What are we doing in it? I don't know. I think uh, Chrysalis creates more spawns and sacrifice an Eldrazi. Put a it's also 2-3-3 three, three. reach. So blink it, make more spawns. Make more. Why not do all the above? Ulamog the Defiler, which is in Horizons 3. There's a lot of Modern Horizons 3 cards in this. But cast a spell, target opponent exiles the half of their library rounded up. Ward, sacrifice two permanents, which is always just good. But seven mana, I mean 10 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, enters the battlefield with a number of 1-1 one, one counters on it, equal to the greatest mana value among cards in exile, which can be utterly nuts. I mean, that's a huge boy. And has Annihilator X, where X is number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. So if you exile, I don't know, somebody's omniscience from the library somehow, then this enters as a 1717 with Annihilator 10. Nuts. Utter nuts. Thief of Existence, cast a spell, exile up to one target non-creature, non-land permanent. An opponent controls mana value four or less. If you do, this gains whenever this creature the battlefield, target opponent draws a card, which is always just good. I don't mind exiling literally whatever whatever i want basically whatever i want and yeah you can draw a card i don't really care i'm gonna be exiling your really good thing bond bed protector at the beginning of your end step return a eldrazi card from your grave of your hand which is just always nutty and create two one one scions which you always create the scions you don't have to return something from your graveyard it just says return from your graveyard to your hand cool and then create two one ones cool which pair really well with the commander spawn game commander speaking of commander is <laughs> the 2-2 cast a spell create three zero one spawns 
you can pay two in sack and Eldrazi and deals two damage to any target, but that doesn't really matter. You're going to be blinking this like every chance you possibly can with Conjurer's Closet and Teleportation Circle. Duh. Oh, wait, it's Cast Trigger. So maybe not, blink, but Snapping Void Crawl, three mana, one, three. You can tap to add two. You can pay four and tap and draw a card. So if you need a little bit more card draw, Sifter Skulls is just non token creature you control dies, create a 1 1 Scion. Things are going to be dying anyway because people are going to be targeting you to high health, so why not just get something out of it? Roaming Throne triggers literally whatever you want. I mean, just name Eldrazi, something triggers, triggers an additional time. Lamont, something that put in the graveyard from Battlefield, so got one spawn. It's always good. Here, uh, that's one That's one of like the only cards in this that's not an Eldrazi, but it creates Eldrazi. So, it's always good, but you can make an Eldrazi from anything. Othari Sun's Glory. I almost didn't put in here until I realized how utterly broken this is. It's a five mana, three, three, flying lifelink haste, which is already good. Whenever this attacks, you get an experience counter, which pairs really well with the commander because experience counters are not hard to get but like you just they're hard to deal with and then create two uh two two red rebel that's tapped and attacking breach experience counter you have which can always just be its own separate win con in and of itself but at the end of the day it's just good to get even more and then pay four tap and untap rebel you control and return this from graveyard the battlefield tapped i mean hey why not just keep bringing it back bring it bring it bring it back bring it bring it bring it back Fireball. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Null Drifter is obviously cast a spell, draw two cards. It's 4 4 Flying Annihilator 1 that it can evoke free. It's basically just like uh, the other card, not Null Drifter. Uh, the other Drifter. It's a, it's a freaking popper card. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember this? I don't know. It's the Eldrazi version of it, so it's got to be good. Mondrak Glory Dominus, again, another uh, Eldrazi card, but doubles the tokens, and you can give it Indestructible. So, it's just good. Why not? Marina Clan uh, Nell Paw cares about creatures dying, you get experience counters, which is always just good. I mean, heck, you need more uh, You need more experience counters? Why not just have things die, like your Scions and Spawns? Beginning of your end step, choose a creature from your graveyard. If the card's mana value is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return it to the battlefield, which is nuts, or otherwise put it in your hand. I don't mind. I, don't, I really don't. just get more experience counters. The new Kozilek from it, uh, from Modern Horizons, though, no, cast this spell. Two, uh, two players each manifest two cards. For each card manifested this way. You draw a card. So give it to, you know, give it to the spell player. Give it to the person who doesn't have a lot of creatures because manifesting can always just be ugh. Whenever you, you know, playing against somebody who plays a lot of creatures, then you have to flip it over and they do something, but. Of the colorless creatures you control get plus three. That's insane. All your scions, all your zero ones suddenly be three threes. Uh, yes, sir. Cosmic Butcher of Truth. Cast a spell, draw four cards. 12, 12, Annihilator, four. Whenever it goes into the graveyard. I mean, pff, nuts. Love card draw. Into the Herald's the End is two mana, two, two. That colorless spells you cast, mana value or cost one less to cast. Other colorless creatures you control at plus one, plus one. One ones and your zero ones and uh, one twos and one one. One two twos, respectively. That's just good. Hideous Taskmaster, full of a bunch of stuff, is a seven two with trample, haste, and annihilator. Give those creatures trample, haste, and annihilator one. That's all I'm turn. I mean, it utter, it's utter nuts how cards like this were even created. Like, insane. Herald of Kozla, color spells you cast cost one less to cast. See a theme here? We're going to be discounting all this stuff and just playing it for whatever. And they're going to be doing insane stuff to us. Glaring, fl fl Glaring Flesh Raker is a three mana 2 2, cast a color spell. Whenever another color creature enters the battlefield under control, it deals one damage. I mean, hey, I'm just saying its impact tremors on crack. Just means, you know. You create more spawns and scanners, and then you could buff up, I don't know, that Ulamog we were talking about earlier. Number of experience counters you are. Well, you have. I mean, hey, you could just make it even give it a more annihilator, and then a bada bing, bada boom, you've killed everybody just you were playing the game. Also, another one of those non uh, L 
creatures, but nobody really cares at the end of the day. Watcher, just another thing if you want to blink, because it creates a bunch, couple of scions. Guy Spawner, again, creates a couple of... That creates scions as well. Repurposer, casts a spell, and whenever it dies, it creates some... You know, it's always neat. Drazi Displacer is another just something you would just blink it for three mana. Drowner of Truth, you can either create some spawns or you can play the other side and uh, this and that it's always just a good time kind of would have ruined first creature spell you cast up uh, each turn costs two less to cast oh beautiful dose but mostly because whenever you cast it you search your library for colorless creature card if mana converted mana costs seven or greater reveal it shuffle your library and put that card on oh yeah oh yeah insane if you can immediately draw it and then do whatever you want with it Chittering Dispatcher, Humana 2 3, leaves the battlefield, crit a 0 1. I mean, hey, it's got Myriad too, so you can just attack, and then if it somehow, the Myriads, leave the battlefield, and you create 0 1. Home Sifter creates, you know, little scions. Another creature control dies, scry 1. And, you know, card selection is just always good in general. Brood Monitor enters, create 3 scions. So blink that to high hell, why don't you? Blister Pod dies, create a scion. You know, it's just always. Artisan of Kozilek just returns creatures from a graveyard of the battlefield, which is always insane. You can never tell me otherwise. And as an eyelid or two, and it's a 10-9. So, yeah. Just saying, yeah. Atrix and Nev doubles your token. Because why not? Why not create even more? Obviously, there is a bit of setup with this deck. You do kind of got to slowly get there and there. But once you get this deck rolling... It's absolutely insane, nutty. The late game potential in this is insane. I have 4.08, and mostly just because, you know, it's Eldrazi. You got to have some of those high costs. This is color distribution, which is wonky. But if you guys like this deck or like the video, please make sure to like it. It means a whole lot to me. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I think I've already said that. But thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next deck tech.